Hello again, everyone. Today I am profiling my Peg and All Sendak Artist Roll. This is the regular size or the large size, <laughs> and I'm just gonna warn you right now, you're gonna see a lot of dog fur on this thing because <laughs> it is a waxed canvas, and for some reason, once it kind of rubs up against things like that, sometimes it fur will stick to it a little bit. So don't be alarmed, it's just dog fur. <laughs> All right, so with that out of the way, um, I've actually had this for quite some time, uh, I think about a year now, and I have not, unfortunately, <laughs> I have not had the opportunity to actually use this in the field. So I've been kind of messing around with it, trying to figure out what a good layout for it is. Um, the long and short of it is this Sendak carries a ton of material. Um, oh, and this is the, I'm not sure what color green it is, but it's the green wax canvas with the brown leather. And I'll show you the back here too. They also have a smaller version that's about, um, it's a half this size, maybe like this size. Uh, it's the same length tall, but it's a little more narrow. Uh, and my husband actually has one of those, and I, I may pry it away from him at some point and show off his uh, setup. But <laughs> this is the one that I'm using, and uh, let's go ahead and open it up and see what I have in here. So first, before I open it up, though, I wanted to show you that there are two outside pockets here. On the outside of the roll and in one of them I have um, because my intent was to bring this with me when I'm hiking around and want to do some uh, plein air sketching watercolor etc so I put some um, God, what is this stuff called it is uh, like these little things to prevent blisters when you're hiking so I have that back here um, yeah it doesn't really say what it is I want to say moleskine is that right? I don't know. I'll, I'll find it out and <laughs> let you know in the comments below. But so in the front pocket I have that and then in the back pocket I have an A6 sketchbook. So um, this, this totally fits back there with everything being full inside and then that's what I can use. So basically I could just have this and you could just carry it by the um, the loop itself, but I would would probably carry this around in my backpack. Uh, the backpack that I use is a Tom Bin Daylight backpack. Yeah, um, what's the thinner material? So there's like a canvas-like material, and then there's a thinner, um, plasticky material that um, that they make their their more lightweight backpacks out of, and that's the one that I have. And this fits great, plus a whole lot of other things. So. Um, all right, with that, let's go ahead and open it up. So, it's meant to fold up in three sections. So, the first section being these flaps here and the two other sections being these two areas here. It has this nice little zipper pocket over here. And I, I'm really surprised at how much this holds. So I have some washi tape in here so that I can tape off some edges on the paper if I'd like while I'm watercoloring. I have a little pencil sharpener here. I have a little spray bottle that I use to spray my um, watercolor palettes to get them going. I also have some little sanitizing hand wipes in here. I have some earplugs. I don't know why I put earplugs in there. Maybe because I was thinking of travel generally. Um, and then I also, well, definitely, because I also have some uh, wardrobe tape. I, I'm actually not sure if that's the right phrase for it. It is um, sticky tape that where you can uh, tape your, your lapel together if it's coming apart, because that tends to happen for me a lot. So <laughs> that's why I have that. I have a, um, a sand eraser in here. And that's really to get rid of pen on my page. You don't want to you don't want to vigorously erase with this, but if you erase it just a little bit, you should be able to get some excess pen that may may have gotten astray on your page or something like that. I also have some paper clips, well, or uh, binder clips. These are really cool binder clips that fold down so they take up less space. Um, but these would be to keep my sketchbook open. Okay, I have two of those. I have a little natural sponge 
here for the watercolor. You can use that for tree texture or a variety of other things like that. And then lastly, I think that's everything, I have a little um, mono zero eraser to kind of get into fine little areas there. Okay, so that's what's in the zipper pouch, which holds a ton. Okay, I'm gonna open up this flap too. And let's see, I am going to start in the back because one of the things that I'm kind of excited to show you is this watercolor palette also by Peg and All. So this is a wooden watercolor palette with a um, strip of leather over the top. So it just fits into that right there. And here is my little color guide to what I have in there. So because there's no mixing palette, on this particular uh, watercolor palette, I decided to put colors that I wouldn't necessarily mix or mix with other colors. So I put a very neutral palette in here for things that I could use pre-mixed. Uh, and you'll notice that I also have, I think I may have mentioned this on the channel before, the Natural Pastel, AKA Woad uh, watercolor. So this is made out of that natural pigment and uh, it's still a little tacky. I, I put it in here and it was all the way up to the top and then it's, it's gone down by about half since I put it in there and it's also still a little tacky. So, so that one I might need to be careful with but I'm really amazed that I've not gotten anything on the leather yet. Uh, it's because I haven't used this yet. It's been in here. This is a, is a newer purchase compared to the roll itself. They came out with these fairly recently and I, I just have discovered that I have way too many watercolor palettes to use, which is a shame because they all should be used. Um, so yeah, so I put all kind of neutral colors in here that wouldn't necessarily have to be mixed. So I might just use these straight out of the pans. And I will warn you that when I received this, it had a very strong smell it, it was kind of like um, when you get new furniture, that new fur new wooden furniture smell. It, it smelled like that a little, bit, a little bit, but the smell has since dissipated and it's fine. So I'm just gonna put that little guy back in there. And then when I found this recently in here, cause I'd kind of forgotten about it, I realized that I do need to swatch that palette. So I'll put that in there so you can actually see the little peg and all. And then I have a um, Sailor Fude pen, which is a pen with this um, bent nib here. So essentially you can get different uh, qualities of line by moving the pen up and down. So if you put it at the angle that, I, I think this is, so they, they carry them in different angles, which basically means you're gonna get the thickest line at whatever angle that is. I think they have a 45 and a 55 degree angle pen. Um, and I can't remember which one this is, but the green one is the one that works well for my grip, my angle. Um, and I think this one actually needs new ink because I've, I've used it quite a bit. But uh, it's a very cool pen and they're super cheap. So, oops, looks like I have a little bit of, see, this is why fountain pens get all over me. So, and I do have, I believe a permanent, no, I do not. So I, I have a water soluble, man, I'm gonna have to get a paper towel here. I have a water soluble ink in here. And so I cannot watercolor on top of this, but what I have done, boy, this must've been sitting around for a while. What I have done is I have um, used this with water to do sort of a pen and ink painting. So it's a really nice pen for that. And you can get them just about anywhere, Amazon, um, and variety of stationary stores. I have a little water pen or a water brush here. This is, does it say? Kuritake, this is from Kuritake. And it's, I've used it a lot, so I think it probably needs to be replaced. It's a little bit of a, um, oh, here I can get my finger wet and get that ink off. <laughs> the, um, but you can see, so it's very water soluble, that ink is. Um, so I may need to replace this because I've, I've used it a lot and it's, and it's gotten a little worn. And I think that this is the large tip 
for this model of Kuretake, but I'm not entirely certain. Okay, put that back in there. Uh, I have another watercolor palette back here, but I'm gonna show that at the end. So then I have, this has permanent ink in it. This is a Lamy uh, Joy. It's the Lamy Joy, which is the, uh, it originally comes with a square uh, stub nib so that you can do calligraphy. That's, that's what this is for originally. But what I have, <laughs> and this may seem silly, and I've, I was kind of copying Jane Blundell when I did this, um, or maybe Liz Steele. They're, they're two big watercolor sketchers that I follow. Um, I have a Lamy Gold nib in fine on here. Um, why? I don't know. I got the Gold nib on sale when it was otherwise I would not recommend getting that because <laughs> it's kind of pricey. Uh, I have carbon, platinum carbon ink in here. So that is permanent. So this is essentially what I'm using as my sketching um, tool for watercolor. So I'll put, I'll put my basic sketch down with this and then watercolor over it once it's dry. And I'm surprised this has stayed as white as it is. You can see on the tip here though that it's starting to get a little discolored. And then here I have a uh, Tachikawa sketch pen or uh, I'm sorry, dip pen. So with this one, and then I have a uh, comic nib, G, G nib on the end. I forget the exact name, but again, I'll put a link down below. But this is just for, um, sometimes you can sketch with watercolor with this. I, um, you can, with your paintbrush, a fairly thick um, mix of watercolor, you can put that down, you can basically rub your brush down into this little space here and then turn it around and draw with it that way. You could do calligraphy that way. I do mostly sketching with that. Um, and this has kind of been through the ringer, but it's still not doing too bad. This is a relatively new nib on here, so it hasn't gotten all messed up yet. <laughs> and then it has that little cap, which is really nice. So that's in there. Um, okay, there's two more things in the back here and then I'll show you that watercolor palette. So this is a little uh, compass. It can function independently as a pencil. Um, you just push that out and it's a little pencil there so you can draw with that in addition to it being a compass, which I will, let's see, how does that work? There we go. So you fold it out and then there's another piece that folds out here. The only issue with that is you have to make sure that you don't um, push it too hard while you're using it because it might close because it doesn't have any kind of locking mechanism for um, when it's open. But it is pretty handy, mostly for circles, obviously. <laughs> okay, so I'll put that down in there. And then this is a pocket pair of scissors. So this cap comes off there. There is a little thing that goes down on either side here to give you your handles. It's obviously not the most ergonomic pair of scissors in the world, but if in a pinch, if you're just trying to cut something, like, uh, although I usually tear my washi tape, you could cut your washi tape or something else um, while you're out in the field. So I'm gonna push those back up, click that back in. And what's nice about these is they, both, they all have a little pen loop there. Okay, so let's get to the watercolor palette that's in here. So this I may have shown to you before. This is a Meaden watercolor palette that I've just put a Chic Sparrow sticker on here to identify it from other watercolor palettes. And then I've recently retooled this watercolor palette to have different colors in it. This was my original setup here, down here on the bottom. And this is what I have in there now on the top. I had some... Oh, no. Yes, this will happen. This will happen quite a bit. <laughs> Especially with this one because the pans are a little loose there. And this particular one here, because it's a handmade palette, often gets a little weird. Okay, so this is one of the palettes that... Uh, if I haven't swatched already on the channel, it will be swatched soon. <laughs> it just depends on when I posted it. 
this has a combination of handmade watercolors and uh, some Daniel Smiths, and I think it's mostly Rembrandt colors, but um, there's there's like one Schmincke, one Holbein or Holbein. Uh, so it's basically just things that didn't fit into another set. And originally I uh, would play with this quite a bit and when I had it in its different configuration. And this configuration has actually changed a couple of times, but it's sort of like the, the hodgepodge of whatever was left from other palettes that I've made. So uh, it was nice to be able to use that all in one place. And this one actually, this is uh, Daniel Smith Permanent Alizarin Crimson. I wasn't necessarily going to put this in a pan like, like this, but I was filling... Uh, what was I doing? Oh, I was swatching the color, I think, and it just started to, the tube itself started to run out all over the place, and all I had handy was this full-size pan, so I put that in there, <laughs> and that's how that ended up in there. Okay, so I think that's it for this palette. Again, if, if I have already swatched this palette, by the time I post this video, I will put that link down below, and if not, uh, it'll be on the channel soon. So let's go ahead and put that down in there. I have this little um, ruler here. I've, I used to have this in my traveler's notebook for my everyday carry. I just wasn't really using it in there because I, I just was using the, the stencils that I had for making lines. So I just decided to put it in here, but it doesn't necessarily fit all that well because it'll, it'll only, it's magnetic. So it'll be only magnetic to this point because once there's too many layers if I put it over here. So I don't know if it'll end up staying in here, quite frankly, but we'll see. I'll leave it here for now. And down here, I have a few different watercolor uh, travel brushes. This is the number eight Silver Black Beauty. And this one is very hard to get back into the, um, the case because it tends to splay. Um, so what I usually do is I end up licking my fingers and then sh gently shaping the brush before I put it in there. To be honest, if I'm out in the field, I might not do that sometimes. I'll rinse the brush out really well and then I'll put it in my mouth, which is like not good. Don't do that. Because <laughs> if there is any harmful pigment left on the brush, you could be poisoning yourself, basically. Um, I do tend to make sure that I have it pretty well cleaned, but I don't. Don't do what I do um, in that instance. Wetting your fingers and assuming you don't have a pot of water around to do that with, wetting your fingers is the better option. Okay, and this is an Escoda Reserva in size eight. I, uh, I have mixed feelings about this brush, but it's a pretty, uh, pretty good overall mid-size brush, so that's why I have it in here. I have a R16 dagger, which is the 3 8 inch dagger from Rosemary Brush Company. This one I really like. It's a little bigger than the uh, fourth inch dagger, obviously. Okay, and again, I'm gonna lick my fingers, just sort of straighten it out just a little bit because I don't want to catch any of those fibers. Um, and I'll show you this in a second. So this is the smaller dagger that obviously you can see by its discoloration has gotten a lot more use than some of the other brushes in here. And again, wet my fingers. Okay, and here I just have a little headphone adapter, headphone Apple adapter. Oh no, it's stuck in there. <laughs> Probably because this watercolor palette below is, yeah, there we go. So um, I was always losing these and just wanted to have one close by for when I might need it. So that's why I put that in there. Okay, and this is a Sharpie permanent marker in an ultra fine tip. I'll label things, uh, even pans, if, if for some reason I'm working with uh, pans that I need to label, I'll use that. This is just a Sharpie pen, which is like a fine liner pen, permanent when dry. And then that's kind of the most common pen that I use if I'm not using a fountain pen for sketching. This is a, uh, is it Kuritake? No, it's Pentel, 
Pentel brush pen, and this I believe is permanent ink. So you can replace the ink back here. And that is a permanent ink cartridge. And then I have a Micron PN. PN is roughly the size of a 0.5 or a, or a 0.5, sort of in between a 0.5 and a 0.3, but it has a plastic tip, which makes it um, much more flexible than the regular Micron. So if you have a really heavy handed, sorry, my husband is texting me about pizza. Like, dude, stop texting me. <laughs> Sorry, that was an aside there. Um, if you have a really heavy handed grip or you push really hard when you write, the PN is really good because you can, you can press a lot harder than you can on the normal micron tips and you're not going to uh, ruin the tip. I tend to be a fairly firm writer, so that's why I like that. And this is, oh my God, okay. So this is a Uniball Pizza Riot. Okay, okay, okay. So um, this is a Uniball gel pen in the gold color. I don't necessarily use this as a gold. Um, I, I use it sort of as a neutral if I'm sketching um, because it's not super shiny as a gold, which is kind of nice. This is a Sharpie peel off China marker. I have a little um, pencil cap on here to protect the cap or to protect the end of the nib because it, it does wipe off. If, if you can see here, that, that's this that was wiping off in here. So um, this can be used as a resist for watercolor, but you're not gonna be able to take it off. So if, just know that <laughs> if, if you want something that's going to remain white, for your entire uh, picture, that then this is okay to use. It it is an oil-based marker, I believe, so the water in watercolor resists this when you put it down. I I I normally, since this is not my primary sketching uh, role here, you I, I would normally have a little tube or a little pen of masking fluid, and that masking fluid would. Uh, rub off eventually and then you could put a different color over that area that you've kept white But this is for white areas that are going to remain white throughout the entire process. So that's a little trick there And then I have a jelly roll 08 in uh, The Sakura brand this is just to do highlights and things and then lastly I have a Stabilo all pencil now I will put a link below to the video where I swatched some uh, vintage Stabilo All pencils. This is the new label, this is the, a new pencil, and again I put a little pencil cap on the end so that it doesn't rub up against this dark mark here is this one. <laughs> so you can see why I ended up doing that. Um, and this is really, again, I would probably use it sort of like I would use pen and ink. I probably would not use this with watercolor, but depending on the circumstance, I, I might. Uh, it just depends on what I'm doing. But this setup gives me a whole lot of different options for both watercolor, pen and ink sketching, um, just regular sketching. I can use the pencil that is in um, this little compass for just regular sketching. It actually is, is fairly ergonomic because you have a little I mean, for my grip, it might not be the same for everyone, but I can put my middle finger down here and it's actually very comfortable. And what I end up having in here, I think it's the equivalent of an HB lead. So, um, and you can refill the leads in there pretty easily. So it's a nice, it's a nice dual use pencil there. Okay, well, I think I've gone through everything in here. It's taken a little longer than my normal videos would be for this kind of a go through. But, um, but yeah, so I'll show you how I fold it back up, put that flap over there, that's to protect the pencils and things, then this end gets rolled up. Okay, double it over there. And this strap is incredibly um, adjustable, so I'm nowhere near the end of the ability for this to be adjusted. 
uh, you can you could be pumping this up even more. I've seen some people put uh, you know colored pencils or something back here and using this all as a journaling setup, something like that. But this is just sort of my general art setup for traveling. Okay. Well, that's it for today. Feel free to like and or subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.